Greetings friends, it's me John Ross and I'm here with another fun-filled science activity. Today we're going to be talking about mixtures and solutions. Now this is early on in the mixtures and solutions unit as we begin exploring solids, liquids, and gases. Now, in the state of South Carolina, we begin getting into mixtures and solutions in the fifth grade. That being said, your students have possibly, likely, hopefully already been exposed to how to find the volume of a rectangular prism. If they have, they know that length times width times height equals the volume of that rectangular prism. Now, that's great. We're excited. We celebrate. Yay! You can do that. Woohoo! But then I ask my kids, does that help you, that information, that knowledge, to find the volume of this here, this battery? Mm -mm. What about this here, this bolt? Does it help you then? Mm -mm. What about this marble? Does length times width times height help me there? No, because it is not. None of those are rectangular prisms. Oh my gosh. Well, how do we then find the volume. Worry not, children. I will tell you how. We use this handy dandy graduated cylinder. Now, you may be wondering how we use that graduated cylinder. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to model for you. We take our funnel, we take our water, and we pour it in there now. I'm going to set that off to the side. We'll come back to it later. And then I'm going to examine my graduated cylinder. All right. So I start down here, and I got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Looks like, oddly enough, it is smack dab on 70 milliliters. So we're going to take that information, and we're going to record it upon our data table here. The left column has a number of objects listed here. Now these are small objects such as a battery, such as a bolt, we've done said, such as a marble, such as a magnet, a crayon, uh, looks like we got a screw up in here, and then we got a nail. So again, just a variety of things that we can place within this small skinny graduated cylinder. And then the second column is where we would record the water level in the graduated cylinder prior to displacement. Again, that was 70 milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and record 70 milliliters right here. Now, i got to put my battery in here. So I'm going to slip my battery. Notice what I'm doing here. I take my graduated cylinder and I angle it because if I don't, I might have a splash effect. And if I have a splash effect, I might lose some of my precious, valuable water. We don't want that, kids. So, we angle it, we're creating a slide, we slide our battery up in there. Boom! Come back here, and now I check how much did the water level rise. Well, started at 70, right? So that's 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77 milliliters. So, now, I'm going to come back to my data table. In the third column, it says water level in the graduated cylinder post-displacement. That's 77 milliliters. So we got 70 milliliters. We got 77 milliliters. That's important information, friends. That is information we're going to use to find the volume. So I like to ask my kids, how do you think we can use that information to find the volume? Some kids will say, ah! No, kids, that's not right. We need to find the difference. What does difference mean, children? Difference means subtract. So 77 minus 70 equals 7 milliliters. So that is our volume. The next object upon our data table is a bolt. Now, before I put a bolt up in there, I gotta take my battery out. So I'm going to Ooh, take my graduated cylinder and I'm going to model for my students how to take that out without making a gigantic mess. Because if you don't model for them how to do that, you'll have water all over the place. So, I tell them, I put my finger right here so that I cover about half, three-fourths of the graduated cylinder's top part. 
and I tip it over and notice the water's coming out, but it's not getting all over the place and yet the battery is stuck and not falling in the water. So I can remove that battery successfully without making a huge mess. It's exciting for us teacher folks. Now, again, we said bolt. Well, I got to put my water back up in here. So I put my water in here. And I'm going to re-examine. I don't know if you saw this, but there was a little bit of water that splashed out, that dripped out. So now, looks like my water level prior to displacement is no longer 70 milliliters. It is 69 milliliters. So I need to record that again. Now it's time to slip my bolt within my graduated cylinder. Slip it on in, slide it in, boop. <laughs> now we gotta check. Where is the water level now? Well, we started at 69. Now it looks like it went up to 70, 71 milliliters. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna record 71 milliliters. Again, children, how do we find the volume? Hopefully, at this point, they will not say, no, we must find the difference. So it's 69 and 71. We're going to use that information. So 71 minus 69 equals 2 milliliters. Boom. And just like that, your kids have now mastered how to find the volume of an irregular object. Friends, I hope you enjoyed our fun-filled activity today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.